Hi all, my name is uh, Avikshit Bhushan and I'm the Regional Director Asia Pacific for Aerospike. Uh, for today's session, building a real-time ingestion platform using Kafka and Aerospike, it's my pleasure to introduce Matteo Pelletti. Matteo works as an Executive Director, Head of Technology, Data Platform at DBS Bank, and he oversees the design and development of the entire DBS data platform, leading a team of over 130 engineers. Matteo has more than 15 years of experience in software engineering and in recent years, he has been focusing on scalable big data platforms and machine learning, specifically using Hadoop and Spark. Matteo has previously held different roles in startup companies and MNCs alike, leading engineering teams at DataRobo, Microsoft, and Nokia. With that, Matteo, please take it away. Hi, everyone, and thanks, uh, Avik, for the, uh, for the introduction. Um, yeah, in this uh, presentation, I want to um, show a little bit how uh, we, um, basically our journey towards uh, uh, building a data platform and uh, how we kind of evolved uh, from a uh, batch data platform when we started like uh, uh, three years back uh, into more like a, uh, evolving to a, a real time platform and uh, how we decided to use uh, um, Aerospike specifically, and, uh, and uh, what are the main reasons that uh, led us to, um, to, choose, uh, um, to choose Aerospike for, for, for the purpose. Um, so I'll start uh, uh, by giving you a brief introduction of uh, uh, what, is, uh, what was our platform, uh, I'm up until uh, let's say uh, one year back actually um, and uh, how we have evolved it and how we are evolving it okay so we start the platform started about three years back and uh, and uh, we as I said before uh, we started with the proper uh, batch oriented platform Okay, uh, so you can see here that uh, uh, we have different uh, uh, different layers um, and we classify them in tiers. So, so we have tier zero, tier one, tier two, and tier three. Uh, tier zero is basically the uh, what we call a lending zone. So whenever a source system needs to ingest data into the platform, uh, they drop uh, they drop some data into an S3 bucket and uh, our ingestion framework picks it up. Um, going from tier zero to tier one, uh, tier one is the, uh, the first layer after, after the ingestion. And all the data that's in tier one is uh, uh, standardized and, and, and cleans it. And uh, mostly all the stored data in tier one, like any of the major Hadoop platform, or data platform, is stored in files actually. And primarily we use uh, Parquet and Carbon data files uh, stored in, in mostly S3. Um, then we go from uh, tier one to tier two, uh, and this is where we uh, create our uh, global enterprise model. I will get back to uh, this concept later, but uh, I just want to, to, to you to remember this step from going to T1 to T tier two, because we are gonna address it also in the, um, in the, um, in the when, we, uh, when we talk about the streaming. Um, so in tier two, basically we have, uh, uh, we have all, the, um, all the data that has been uh, uh, globalized using our enterprise uh, uh, data model. And uh, uh, basically from tier two to tier three is where all customer applications, uh, they come and they massage the data, they aggregate the data, they produce reports. Uh, to be written in tier three, that that can be uh, consumed externally. Now the consumption uh, is uh, data can be consumed from tier two uh, or tier three, and we have two different uh, two different way of uh, of uh, of consumption of the data. One is uh, using what we call uh, GRAPI, which stands for uh, Global Real Time API. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, Global Real Time API. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and Presto, which is basically our SQL engine, 
which is basically to allow users to uh, to basically access to create dashboards. That's mostly the interface for for, for dashboards. So. Having give you, uh, now I, I gave you this picture because I want to talk about the, the next problem that we have. So, um, as I said before, uh, our batch ingestion is, uh, is uh, we have a source system and the source system, they produce files daily. Uh, these are stored into S3, we go through an ingestion process and, uh, uh, and that's where we store the data, as I said before, and then we have API uh, our API and, and presto getting data. Now, this is was okay until uh, we, uh, we were primarily uh, using batch formats, okay? Uh, but uh, with the evolution of the, the source system, we started having the need for uh, streaming, okay? So we have source system that started uh, pushing events, like for example, uh, mainframe system now are able, uh, we're able to push events from mainframe system. So we need to start ingesting data in real time into, into the platform. So um, our platform, as any of the platform that has been designed and traditionally talking about the, the, uh, the financial services where most of the source system are batch based, um, we face some challenges in uh, in dealing with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with real time. So first of all is the storage format. As you know, uh, most of the uh, most of the data that is ingested into a, a, a data platform is uh, is stored into um, files, Parquet files. We use uh, we use uh, Parquet and uh, Carbon data, which is which is more efficient. Uh, uh, more efficient uh, uh, format, very similar to uh, Databricks Delta. Um, and, uh, but the problem is that these formats are not very suitable for streaming. And especially if you are, uh, if you are storing data in uh, S3, S3 doesn't allow you to append data. And uh, so it becomes very challenging to uh, ingest uh, real-time streams uh, into, into the platform. Uh, the other, the second thing is that, uh, the second uh, consideration is that uh, Kafka, it does have historical storage and, uh, uh, and it does have a lot of functionalities uh, to mimic uh, the, uh, a, a database system. I mean, with KSQL, you can uh, run queries on Kafka. Uh, but the problem is that, the problem that we had is that uh, we do not give, we do not need to give access to the user only the historical records, the history of the record, but uh, uh, we need to somewhat project uh, this record into uh, a database system. And uh, I'll get to this point later with, with, uh, with an example, so that becomes clearer. Um, of course, the other option is to replace entirely the uh, the storage layer, uh, which is currently a file based and S3 based with a database system. But that will become uh, prohibitively expensive. I mean, currently we leverage this S3 storage, which is cheap. If we had to replace everything with, uh, with the database system where we can basically uh, um, append data in real time and keep everything there, of course the performance is better, but we'll have to pay uh, the cost for it. Uh, now let's um, and this uh, let's go back to the to the um, when we discuss about the um, keeping the history of the um, of Kafka is not enough because this is the the, the scenario that we we see uh, multiple times from our source systems. Um, we have different source system generating events. Uh, this can be. Um, can be CDC from databases, from relational databases, or can be from mainframe like Kix events. And they all push this, uh, um, these uh, messages to Kafka. Now, um, many times, especially like I'm talking, taking the example of mainframe, uh, we, get, uh, uh, we get partial updates. Uh, let's say for example, for a customer, a customer can uh, update his phone number 
uh, and the customer can update his, um, his, uh, um, his home address. But uh, what we get is two different messages uh, which, are, uh, which are partial. So in the first, uh, uh, in the first uh, uh, message, we get uh, the phone number update. In the second, uh, we got home address update. Now you can understand that if we keep the entire history of these messages into, into, into Kafka, it's gonna be impossible or very hard for an application uh, to reconstruct uh, the original record by processing the entire history. So we have to find a better way to, to, uh, to address this. Um, now the idea that we came up is, why not having a shadow database that is gonna be capable of replicating what is the state of the SOAR system uh, at that particular point in time. So if I take the example before where we have the, um, the address update, the address update and the phone number update, basically what we'd be doing in this case would be uh, projecting this data into a database where we basically apply the changes to an existing record. So as a requirement, we ask all our source system uh, to send the event type, which can be a, a, an update event, can be a, uh, a insert event, or can be a delete event. And we basically project this event into a shadow database. Now, as I said before, this database, and then I will, I will show you how do this fit into the entire picture, uh, will need to have access to API and through Presto. Now the question that came was like, what's the best choice for uh, this database? Uh, we want, we have several, we have uh, several requirements. Uh, the database must be really fast, obviously, and it must be able to, um, to uh, perform uh, uh, a lot of concurrent operation in terms of insertion and, and reads. And, uh, we don't really uh, we don't really care about uh, um, acidity actually because uh, we don't do transactions in, in, that, in this database. It's basically uh, it's basically a, 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 all the operations are a single insert or single delete operation. Uh, and uh, the other requirement that we have we need to be able to access from Presto. Uh, from API and of course from uh, Spark, which is primarily our our main compute engine. So we evaluated different choices, and we definitely decided to go with uh, uh, key value stores. Uh, we discarded all the uh, the SQL option because we didn't see the point of uh, using SQL in this particular scenario. And uh, and okay, so the first thing was. Uh, very fast key value lookup. And this, we could only get this uh, uh, from uh, uh, plain key value stores. Um, we wanted a solution that was open source. And this is because uh, it's, a, it's basically uh, a company policy. We're trying to move away from legacy solution and moving towards, uh, uh, towards uh, open source. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to have a solution that was really fast, but uh, uh, we uh, didn't want to have the burden of having everything in memory. So the ideal, uh, the ideal solution for us was something that was a hybrid between memory and, uh, and, and flash storage. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, we, uh, we were looking for was a solution that was like a share nothing architecture because it's much more maintainable uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, much easier to scale uh, rather than having a solution where you have different roles for different nodes like master, slaves, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is an also another interesting aspect that yes, we wanted a key value store, but we wanted something more. We wanted the ability to have, uh, to store complex data structures, not just simple key value, and having, as this, the other point says, secondary indexes. So of course we want a really fast key value lookup, 
but we want to be able to look up for uh, based on other criteria as well. And that's what secondary indexes give us. And uh, of course, last but not least, uh, we, uh, we, we want to have some, some, some commercial support because, uh, uh, because uh, uh, of course we're gonna go, we, we want to go open source, but uh, you know, given the industry we're in, uh, if things do not go as expected, we want to have uh, a partner to work with uh, for any issue. So based on this table that you can see, uh, our choices ended up, uh, basically we reduced the choices to, uh, to two uh, products. One was Aerospike and the other one was uh, FoundationDB. Um, FoundationDB has, uh, is lacking some, 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 uh, some features. Uh, and that's the reason why we choose to go with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Aerospike, which is giving us basically what, uh, what, uh, what we're needing. So let's go back to the original picture where we, we show the, uh, the batch data platform. And I want to show you how uh, the streaming component uh, gets plugged into that. So we have the, uh, the upper part that is basically the, the, the batch mode and the lower part, which represents the streaming. As you can see here, we have data that is being ingested into Kafka. Uh, we have our own, uh, this is basically our own ingestion engine, which we call Flux for batch and flux stream for the streaming data. And uh, from T0 to T1, uh, all the data after standardization and cleansing is pushed into another Kafka topic. And uh, we also store the historical data uh, in, in carbon and parquet format. Uh, but where it gets interesting is from T1 to T2. So this is where we do the, uh, what I called before the projection. So we take all the events and we project them uh, into what we call a real time snapshot, okay? And at the same time, we uh, forward the data to a different Kafka topic. And keep in mind also that uh, we are not storing everything, uh, the entire history into the, in our snapshot, but we have basically a parallel uh, power snapshotting which takes end of the day data or end of the hour data and dumps it into uh, a file format. And this allows us basically to, to, uh, to save on cost because we only keep uh, in, uh, um, in, a, in Aerospike uh, the data or the, the real time data, which is basically the current day data or the current hour data. Uh, do not forget that uh, uh, we need to uh, be able to access this data, both from our API layer and from our Presto layer. I will get to this later, but just keep in mind these uh, these uh, components because that's that's where I'm going to be focusing in the in the in the in the next slides. Um, so as I said, uh, we have an enterprise model from as I said before from T1 to T2. This is where uh, we create this enterprise model and uh, it, what, uh, this enterprise model is basically a global model for the entire bank. So uh, think about this, this problem that we have. In the bank, we have uh, uh, tens of different source systems and uh, all these source systems, they have the concept of a customer, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, a customer representation in, uh, uh, in a source system is uh, different from a customer representation in a different source in another source system, and uh, we need to unify all these uh, um, these models into a single model uh, that is stored at T2 layer. Now we started this work already with uh, with the batch uh, with the batch approach, but then it gets more complex when we talk about the streaming approach because we, at this point we have to unify the streaming model and the batch uh, and the batch model. So this is where uh, this is where uh, the thing comes in. Uh, whenever the card source system uh, pumps data in, we have our uh, projector that not only uh, not only uh, stores the data into into the real time snapshot, 
in the aerospace, but it basically globalize, is globalizing the model to create a unified model uh, across the bay. And the same goes with all the, all the, other, all the other source systems. Um, as I said, uh, the, uh, this is a component that we call the, uh, the globalizer. The globalizer is basically a, uh, a custom component which has a, a, a DSL, it's primarily uh, written in, uh, in YAML format, that allows you today uh, to make, uh, to, um, to do data mapping. This is basically a, 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 a streaming version and a new uh, version of what uh, Informatica used to do for a lot of companies, like create mapping fields from one model to another, to create a, a global model. So all the ingestion pipelines that we have, they go through all these steps, uh, especially uh, we're talking about streaming. They go to a globalize, they go to standardization, then they go to globalization, and then go to a projection uh, step where the, data, the globalized data is actually projected into, uh, into, into the database and into aerospace. Um, the other th thing we need to talk about is the, uh, is the storage format. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know how many of you knows about uh, Avro. I guess it's quite popular. It has become very popular with, with Apache Kafka. But many of you will know that uh, well, every message coming from, uh, from Kafka uh, is basically in Avro format. And that's how you can leverage the, the schema evolution. So we said, OK, let's take Avro as the de facto standard for, uh, for us. So Avro is a standard for, for the streaming part, uh, but we said, why, don't, why not use Avro also for uh, storing uh, the data itself? And on top of that, we can also leverage Avro uh, for serving the data. Avro is, it's, uh, it also support implementation of RPC services, which are very fast because it's a binary format compared to, uh, to REST API, so it's much com more compact and faster. And the other good thing is it's uh, very well, um, very well uh, supports schema evolution, which is very, very important uh, for us. Now, um, this goes back to what I was showing before, uh, talking about the different components. Uh, we have the globalizer, the projector, and uh, uh, every data that is stored in Aerospike is also periodically snapshot. So we uh, keep uh, the real time uh, the real time data in Aerospike, uh, and at the end of the day or at the end of the hour, we persist uh, this uh, uh, this data into files, carbon and parquet file. Now. Uh, the format, as I mentioned before, to link myself to what I mentioned before, the format used to store data uh, all the way to Aerospike is basically Avro. Uh, but when uh, we dump the data into files, we transform this Avro payload into, uh, into Parquet or Carbon format. And uh, Avro also gives us the ability to, uh, to ease this uh, transformation because both format, uh, they, have, uh, they have a fixed schema. Um, now, this is, uh, uh, this is an example of how we, uh, we store Avro inside uh, Aerospike, okay? Uh, the inspiration of this was taken actually from, uh, uh, from the implementation that uh, Apple uh, did on top of FoundationDB where they leveraged, uh, um, they leveraged protobuf uh, to store data inside FoundationDB. Uh, we like this idea and we basically apply the same concept because it's, it allows us to, uh, uh, to um, have a very compact format and at the same time having all the, all the functionalities. So basically what we supposedly that we have a format, a, a message a record similar to what you see here, uh, which is a customer with different fields. Uh, we basically create an Aerospike record, which uh, uh, where the key is basically the customer ID. And 
The payload is actually the full binary dump uh, in Avro uh, encoding of the record itself. Uh, as I said before, uh, we need to access to some secondary indexes. So this is the reason why when we persist the data, we extract uh, some uh, uh, fields uh, to be represented in secondary indexes. As you can see here, for example, we have a, an index that is a country. So we extract uh, uh, the country uh, and uh, put it as a secondary, as a secondary field. Uh, of course, this has, has side effects. One side effect is the fact that uh, re-indexing some data is not going to be so easy because, uh, uh, because uh, you know, it requires you to decode the Avro format and extract the indexes. But this was uh, good, really good for us because we don't need uh, those level of schema changes. Our, our structure is, is, is quite fixed. Uh, now, uh, once everything, as I said before, we have everything stored in, uh, in, uh, in, the, um, in, in Avro into Aerospike, and we have the periodical snapshots, okay? Now, what we need to offer is the ability to query uh, the uh, both sources at the same time. Uh, for example, when I access, uh, uh, when I access the data, uh, through Presto or through our API, and I'm performing a query of, uh, let's say, a list of transactions, uh, I want to have the uh, current day data uh, plus the historical data, because I might want to get data from today and tomorrow, uh, and I don't really care where this data is stored, but I know, we know as a data platform, that the current uh, data, the today's data, is stored into Aerospike, and the previous data is stored into the periodical snapshot. So what we uh, have built is basically a, a data access layer and also a, a Presto adapter uh, that is not yet built but is in development now uh, that allows us to connect to files and uh, uh, Aerospike as well. And this allows us to run Presto queries uh, we basically treat those as, as data sources, and this allows us to run Presto queries on both, uh, uh, on both engines, on, on files and our real-time database, uh, without the user uh, having to know where the data is stored. There is a, basically a federation uh, between, uh, between, the two, uh, between the two storage layers, uh, and uh, uh, we are able to serve the data to Presto and run and, uh, and use uh, SQL for the user or through, um, through, our, uh, through our API, which uh, uh, can serve uh, uh, Avro object itself, actually. Uh, and on top of that, uh, user can use GraphQL to, 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 access, uh, to, to, to access the data as well. So um, this is, gives you a little bit of an overview of everything. Now, we still have some challenges. And uh, uh, one, the first one being the fact that uh, uh, eventual consistency, because what we have here is uh, streaming and eventual consistency. And uh, our data platform is not really used, uh, uh, is not just used for analytical purposes, but is used also for uh, operational purposes. So you can imagine that uh, uh, there are some delays in real time data coming into the platform. We're trying to reduce these delays down to 250 milliseconds max, uh, but you can imagine that uh, there are some application that maybe they're triggering operation directly on the source system, and then they expect to find the data, uh, to query the data uh, directly into, uh, into the, uh, from our data platform. Uh, and examples are, a mobile application that interact directly with the source system, but then they, they come to the data platform to fetch, to fetch the data. And obviously there is this eventual consistency that, that, uh, uh, that uh, sometimes it can be an issue. Uh, the, other, uh, the other issue that we have is that uh, uh, streaming is good, but sometimes we face challenges because this core system, this source system is not fully designed for streaming. Uh, so there are many hacks that sometimes they need to implement because the source system is not capable 
of offering uh, full support, the entire 100% support for streaming. So let's say most of the time we can do streaming, but in some situation, we have to fall back to uh, batch uh, ingestion, uh, especially for example, talking about membrane system, uh, sometimes this is the thing that we face. So yeah, this gives you a, an overview of uh, our, the evolution of our data platform and how we started using, how we introduced uh, real time and how we started leveraging uh, Aerospike for, uh, uh, for bringing in real time data and basically gluing everything together. So yeah, this concludes my speech and thank you very much to everyone. Hey, thank you, uh, Matteo. Um, that was an excellent talk. Um, so anyway, um, folks who attended this session um, request you to enter your questions into the box. Um, unfortunately, Matteo will not be able to respond uh, today. Uh, he'll be responding tomorrow. Uh, so please do come back to this session and uh, check, your, check his responses tomorrow. Um, with that, I thank everyone. <laughs>